Ryan, to get us started, give me two truths and a lie. All right. Um, hopefully this is going to be really challenging. <laughs> so truth number one is the last time I went to L.A., I think it was also the first time I went to L.A. and stayed overnight. I actually met in person over a dozen movie stars and celebrities. Number two, I have been at the same time within two days to both the Grand Canyon and Death Valley. And number three is I have two tattoos. What do you think? Those are those are excellent. Those are excellent right there. That is a lot to chew on. I think that the third one is the lie. The tattoos is the lie. So you're correct. Yes. But what's the truth of it? Do you want to guess that? The truth is that uh, I think people have a hard time having two tattoos. So if you get two, you're probably going to go more than that. That's right. I got four. Okay. That's true. I, 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 I like it. So we went to LA, met a bunch of celebrities. You really right? met them? Or? Who does that? Right? Yeah. So, so that's the most fun story. Um, <laughs> it, was a, it was a trip. For, uh, we drove as a family after my senior year from DC to LA uh, and back. So when we were staying there, first night we were staying at the Beverly Hilton and there was this awards event, but it was, I think if I remember correctly, I think it was something like the Vision Awards and it was like a, almost like a community local LA or, or maybe state level kind of like award show, but it wasn't some sort of, you know, obviously national uh, or international red carpet thing. So if you were in the hotel, you could just hang out and chill and do whatever, but all these celebrities were there right? Because it's in LA. So we're just like, holy cow, like Mayor Sofina, Samuel L. Jackson, Jennifer Little Hewitt, like John Voigt. I, I mean, I just, it was crazy. I have Samuel L. Jackson's autograph. He was late, by the way, uh, and was still so cool that he was like, oh, hey, I'm late, but I'll still shake your hand and sign autographs and be cool. Uh, it was just, I was like, who does this? You know, I mean, thousands millions of people go to la and maybe maybe you see somebody on like a movie set tour but like to see literally like this this red carpet experience up front and personal and like shake people's hands and i was just that's <laughs> like okay Super cool winner, winner in my book so there you go yeah. that's like the great american road trip right there everybody piles in the car drives across the country how how, yeah. how, how old were you and how many people were in the car so um it was it was tactical so on the way out it was my my younger brother my dad and i so my dad always says he had two only children uh so all three of us started off on this uh excursion and my mom's like i'll meet you in la because she's like there's no way i'm putting up with those three clowns for multiple days in a car and sure enough like after about two days you know we had our you know knock down drag out whatever i don't you know whatever was was absolutely built up and coming and then got that out of the way and then the rest of it was fine and we were all you know fun and dandy and all that and so by the time my mom came out we were all in a good place and then we saw more stuff coming back because we did you know we did you know death valley grand canyon bright like amazing experience coming from la on the way back um i mean it was fun going out but like, just the sights on the way back because we went kind of like south to LA and then kind of northish on the way back. So it was a total of about almost uh, a month. And it, it, this was instead of doing beach week. So I, I just graduated from high school. Everybody does beach week, you go away. So I was all salty and like, man, I don't get to do beach week because I got to be in a car with you yeah. clowns. Then I get to LA and have that. And I'm like, okay, like, I'll, I'll, I guess, I guess this was better than beach week probably could have been. So anyway, it, it 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 all works out, and now you've it got does. an awesome story. Oh my goodness! Like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I love it. Well, Brian, what's what's top of mind for you right now? You know, it's man. There's a lot of things, and I and I and I want to kind of probably drill into the most salient ones. We've gone through some pretty interesting experiences, even just this year, because you have a bunch of things going on you know domestically in the world you just kind of kind of got of a lot uh, you know a lot of factors influences and things kind of impacting everything and so specific to like the financial world it, it's 
I think the thing is, you know, how do we really stay calm and stay connected to the things that are really important for decision making? Um, and I think that's really what we are spending as much time on as we can, like in our practice and just kind of in our world, like, hey, let's cut through a lot of the noise uh, and really make sure that we are able to help stay focused on the things that are going to be really important. And then also, how do we kind of digest and and figure out what the decision components are? Um, because I think, you know, a lot of times you kind of you either get intentionally or unintentionally distracted or, or things kind of balloon out into a different place that um, they don't need to be. And, and so, you know, I always feel like just first thing is, or, you know, let's, let's tear down these barriers to decision-making and make sure that we see things for what they are so we can move forward and, and, you know, feel confident as we're doing so. Uh, I also am a big believer of, you know, don't do anything out of fear, right? Not that negative emotions don't have their place, because they do, but I usually say they're indicator. They're like warning lights on your dashboard. Like, hey, negative emotion, I'm feeling less than whatever, fill in the blank, whatever emotion, to use that as that moment to say, okay, what's going on? Let's step back. Let's lean into this, but unpack it, get to the bottom so we can kind of really figure out what's, what's happening. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've seen, you know, I mean, whether it's market stuff, whether it's insurance, um, whether it's just... You know, how do people really optimize cash flow? How do organizations uh, grow, invest? Um, you know, all of these are not new decisions, but I think they feel like the variables have changed a lot. So, and, so, and in some respects they have, and in a lot of respects, maybe they haven't. So, yeah. I appreciate, you know, we are, there's so much coming at us. You've got yes. so much stuff beyond our control, war in the Middle East and 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 in 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 Russia, and we've got inflation and high prices of gas and food is more expensive than it's ever been. And lions and tigers and bears, oh my. And I've got the same stuff I've always had to deal with with family stuff and personal stuff and stuff in my head and in my body and everything else. So so how do you tear down those barriers? How do you like it's like, okay, how do I strip everything away and say what is fundamentally important and how do I just focus on that and tune tune it out? Yeah, I mean, I, I've, i as a practice, try to, um, you know, certain routines and certain habits give at least me and then, you know, in a professional context, clients and people that I work with, um, a better way to kind of gain clarity and, and at least move to a better, healthier place. Um, but I think the simplest part of that is a very, very intentional process of um, the most, well, you know, what I would say are critical things. How you start your day matters more than any of us realize, right? If you start off bad, it's very hard to course correct and get it to be good. So literally just having a good routine in the morning to, to make sure that you are setting yourself up for success mentally, emotionally, physically, that makes such a huge difference. I, I, I can't. And, and I don't think that that, you know, obviously what that can look like is different for anybody, but just knowing like, hey, I want to start every day off as best as humanly possible. And, and I can choose that. I can control that, even if it's raining or, you know, whatever, as long as something's not like physically on fire, usually you can you can find a way to take some intentional steps. So you're starting off. off. So that's good. And I think the rest of it is just, um, yeah, making sure that there's a process. So that way, when it comes to engaging in decision making or and or examining the emotions um we're able to 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 apply something so that way there are steps to take to you know engage and, and kind of get come out to the other end and i think a lot of times you know that's why i minored in psychology in college and i majored in journalism so you know communicating as well as understanding how we think and just being able to apply some very good sound um, tried and true principles and, and a process just kind of does that and, and keeps you balanced. Um, but we also aren't afraid to have conversations that I think maybe other people in our, in our arena, uh, aren't as comfortable having, but most of life is very emotional and, and, it, and it's harder, especially when it comes to money. Money is the number one people fight, get divorced, all that other stuff. Right. So we know that. 
So how do we take all of that power away from it and make it something that's not any of those negative things, but something that's actually empowering? We can make those kind of shifts. So I think, yeah, we just we just do that and we do that with a lot of intention and 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 the people that really work with us well appreciate that. Uh it's a it's a different approach. Um and I think it just helps. You know, it's interesting to kind of see the cool thing about, you know, what are all the unintended consequences of doing something simple, like helping somebody financially improve their lives. You know, you see benefits in other areas, you know, like we go through some of these things where I'm helping somebody unpack why they have all these negative attachments to money, you know, emotionally, whatever it is. And then you see that then translate into like, oh, they're treating their spouse a little bit better now as well. Like maybe money wasn't the only thing these negative things were, were connected to and health and all kinds of stuff. So I know, that's a long winded answer to what was a short question, but uh, no, I, I appreciate know. that very much. And I imagine that uh, the answer is not, we sweep things into the uh, under the rug yeah. and we, we ignore these feelings. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big believer into leaning into the tension, you know, tension exists. Um, pain exists. All these things exist and they're not, I don't, you know, I, I think a lot of them, they're, they're not positive or negative, good or bad. They just, they're like that, you know, again, warning light in your dashboard, they're indicators. And so anything that indicates something's going on is an opportunity to then figure that out and, you know, move through whatever that experience is to, a, to a, you know, a better place. Or, you know, if it's, just, I need to unpack something so I can get back to, to a good place, to a place of balance or a place of you know, peace or something like that, whatever that is. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, I don't want to, yeah, don't avoid things, lean into them because there's always something good on the other side of whatever it is. May not be earth shattering breakthrough, but just going through the process itself is healthy, is healing, is cathartic and doing it enough time, then now you've created that habit. And therefore, yeah, I know I can keep doing this it keeps working out. There is a way to, to you know, make this literally just a, a routine that becomes a part of your life. So, yeah, I found that habits and routines, be it uh, a morning routine, the end of your day routine, but what you've been talking about is how do I create a routine around? I'm I'm experiencing a feeling that I don't like, and now I create a routine of I'm going to honor the way that I'm feeling if it's. I'm I'm nervous or I'm I'm ashamed about a decision that I've made. So you create a routine around actually dealing with it. Yes. Yeah, and and I like how you ended that, dealing with it. Cuz I think sometimes we like to talk about things and it's almost like if we just talk about it, it deals with itself. And and I'm not saying that that may not be a part of it, but there is a big difference, you know, it, it's kind of like the airing of grievances for anybody that loves Seinfeld, right? That sounds great and funny, but I don't necessarily think it's super productive in terms of being formative or addressing any of those grievances. And so um, it's almost like, you know, I, I used to say this with saltier language, but if somebody's sitting in poop, you don't want to go down and just sit next to them and therefore you're both sitting in poop. You reach out your arm and you want to pull them out and be like, hey, let's go. Let's, you know, wash ourselves off and let's let's find a way to get out of this. Um, and so, yeah, I think I think it's dealing with with it. And, and we start to very quickly realize that that a lot of times we just, you know, we are in many respects are victims of our own kind of mind, you know, or, or just, you know, we're ill trained. In, in a lot of ways to know, okay, how do I do this? You know, I think of my parents, you know, um, the way my mom was emotionally wired, she developed and helped me develop a lot of emotional intention, intelligence in my own life, but it was through her transition and alcoholism, right? And then, and, and sobriety. So I saw, you know, again, what a process, whether it be 12 steps or anything, right, can do to help you change yourself. And it was a process that begins with introspection, right? And, and, and begins with dealing with stuff. And therefore, you know, and, and knowing that there are stages and, and then, you know, you go from one level to the next, but it's also circular. 
right? It doesn't stop. Self-improvement doesn't have, there's no ceiling. You can keep getting better every single day of your life. So I think that that's really, you know, these are just kind of core fundamental beliefs that I try to have. And I also then carry into our professional arena because again, you know, investment management, financial planning, insurance, all of these things, they seem very heady. Um, you know, doing employee benefits, property, there's, and there's just a lot of stuff that's, you know, not common language or, or, and again, not things that we're all readily equipped to be really effective at. So how do we do that as a professional, but, but get to the table first, where sometimes getting up to the table is a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with what you're trying to deal with. And I can't be good as a professional in my mind. if I'm not good with that other stuff. You know, somebody's still bothered and, and they got the emotions connected to some sort of decision and, and they make the decision, but they didn't address the emotions. To me, that's incomplete work on my end. Um, so I try to, you know, be be really, really good and mindful of that. I appreciate that. And that's that the term mindful. You think that people have a negative connotation about mindfulness? Is it kind of woo woo? Yeah, I, I think there's definitely it lands that way. And then I think the other way is probably like it's dismissive. Not it's just because you don't know like what is mindfulness. I don't understand. It doesn't have a context. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I think that that's another thing. You know, there are all kinds of words when it comes to psychology, behavior, emotions, all the other stuff. And so I think. Um, being mindful, right, of the words or the language or just kind of figuring out where people are with that. But, you know, I think, you know, if I had to guess, a lot of us don't know how to have a process of stepping back mm -hmm. and reflecting. Um, you know, it, 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 we're, I think this is very societal. You know, I think uh, the Americanized culture is a go, go, go. There's there's just, there's a lot of things, A, coming at us, but also that we're expected to just kind of always be dealing with. You just don't see a lot of things and places in our culture where people are like, hey, let's slow down. Let's, you know, stay in the moment. There's not a lot of those habits that exist too often. There are in other you know, outside of the United States, I think that these exist in certain other parts of the world. So I think that that's, you know, probably the biggest part as to where all that comes from. So, you know, just just kind of working in these simple things that obviously have big, big benefits um, can be a big help. You know, how do you how do you address the psychology and unpack the things so that way we can I always say this. Everybody wants to make good financial decisions. Everybody does. Nobody comes to me and says, you know what? Give me $10 million. I'm going to blow it all tomorrow. It's going to be amazing. And then maybe I'll get arrested on Thursday. Like nobody says that. So we all want to make the, the right decisions. But the difference in the question is, why haven't we? Why aren't we? What's stopping us? If we want to do this, we all kind of have a same general goal of, of doing the right thing with when it comes to money what's standing in our way. And I think that that's, that's where kind of, that's the intersection of what we're talking about. Is that a lot of times it's probably a lot more emotional than it is just a lack of data. We're in the, we're in the digital economy, right? We, none of us should lack data at this point. It's how do I take the information, distill it down, make it relevant, and also work through things that, you know, up to this point in my life have been barriers to decision-making, shame, fear, all these things that just make it harder to, say thumbs up thumbs down to something yeah i think that that makes a ton of sense and it kind of brings us full circle to what you're talking about we need to be able to cut out the noise and maybe another car reference talked about the check engine light coming on well if we're redlining just in life and i'm yeah. just like constantly on tilt i don't have i don't have the time or the ability to to have that stillness or take that step back, say, okay, what do I really think about that? And, and can I really, you know, take time to think about how I'm feeling and what's really most important? So I think that, that, that it's all really well said. 
No, I, I totally agree. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, it's it's hard sometimes to feel like what you're doing is countercultural, but hopefully I think that there seems to now be at least a recognition. You know, one of the things that was challenging coming out of the pandemic, but now coming into a different season of wherever we are in the world and in global society is mental health is now taking a completely different place in the in the infrastructure and the hierarchy of things that are that are you know front and center and so we're seeing at least we're reconciling it, the fact that we've all had collective trauma we've experienced um and whether you consider it a big t or a little t like trauma is also personal you know and a lot of us can have that um so but yeah it, it's back to that you know let's let's also now see like i gotta take care of my mental health if I'm going to take care of a lot of these other things, I can't put it to the side. And I'm seeing, you know, so much example of, of when it doesn't get taken care of, how how bad things can go, you know, and, and how things can fester and, and spin out of control. So I think, you know, I tend to I tend to have a positive outlook on most things. I think hopefully this now, you know, repositioning of the need to examine mental health as part of a holistic approach to living better, living a life of balance and and purpose and mindfulness, I think can carry us forward. If we can continue to stay in this, let it, let it develop into something that allows us to maybe change elements of our culture uh, to create a better framework for us to live well and maybe not be so go, go, go all the time. And, you know, I think the grinder mentality, what it used to be called, right? I think that's dying. And frankly, good riddance. Um, it's, it's just, now I, I think my, one of the favorite things that I like to say, I'll never regret the money I didn't make. I will regret the time I didn't spend with the people that I care about the most. And that's just, I don't know. It's a truth I try to live by. I think that that's well said for sure. Yeah. Well, that was a good one, Brian, but we're ready for your difference making tip. What do you have for us? All right. Difference making tip. When it comes to money answer two questions that i ask every single person that i work with so that it reveals and unlocks kind of a path for you to go forward question is on one side what's the best financial you've ever the best financial decision you've ever made and why and you want to really quantify that what's the worst financial decision you've ever made and why on the other side and you want to quantify that because what that will give you is the answer to how you see money and what you consider to be a good decision. Being able to then know that for yourself makes you a much more effective architect. You know, so you can channel your choice architecture to say, you know what, this is really how I'm wired to evaluate myself and reflectively say uh, these things are positive. Um, and also, you know, knowing the answer to the other side really helps you also know where did I go out of bounds? What were the what were the context of that? Why do I think that that was a bad decision? And and again, that so that bring those two together. I think that's going to create a really good starting place, or just allow people to take that next step, that next level, and in, in whatever their pursuits are, whether it comes to money or life in general. So I think that that's hopefully a good helpful tip um, that maybe. We haven't asked, you know, maybe you haven't really asked yourself those questions or if you have, do it again, you know, and, and really, really, really get down to the bottom of what the answers are. I think that that is great stuff. That definitely gets, come on. That, 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 that's awesome. Great choice architecture. It's a great thought exercise. And to your point, a hundred percent, if that's a question, if those are questions you've asked yourself in the past, do it again. But I'm guessing the majority of us, I don't even know if I've ever thought about what's the best financial decision I've ever made and what's the worst. I bet it's easier to think about the worst one, uh, but uh, super, super, super valuable. Well, Brian, thank you yeah, so much yeah. for coming on, man. Uh, where can people learn more about you? How can they engage with you? So I'm going to, I'm going to give you two places to go. Uh, I am extremely visible and active on LinkedIn. So if you search for Brian Haney and add a couple of the designations after my name, I'll, you'll definitely be able to find me in there. Uh, that's that's my platform of choice. Uh, and I do also have a, a show as well, a podcast, if you want to listen to any 
any of the fun interviews I've had with people like yourself and others, George. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. That's the Haney Company Financial Guy Show. And it's on just about every podcasting platform that exists, I'm pretty sure. So very findable in either of those two places. Uh, and, you know, absolutely widely available if anybody has questions or want to pontificate some of the stuff, please reach out. Love it. If you enjoyed this much as I did, show Brian your appreciation. Share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas. Find Brian Haney, B-R-I-A-N-H-A-N-E-Y on LinkedIn and throw in one of his many designations and he will pop right up and then check out the Haney Company Financial Guy show wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks again, Brian. Thanks for having me on, George. Finally, a friendly reminder that there's never going to be anybody more interested in your financial success than you are. So act accordingly.